we've got a lot of daring, uh, awesome campaigns on here. Pretty much all of these uh, are by people that you know we know. Smokes the Fox is here. That's a, a nice Mike Barron um, campaign. Mike Barron wrote this. Uh, Chrome Dog, happy to see that here. Well, hello there, and welcome back to another uh, live stream with Justin K. Sweet, a.k.a. Agent Zero, and in this case, uh, Perro uh, per Hikama, <laughs> a.k.a. Um, J-Dog, if you will, <laughs> Hikama Dog. Um, anyway, I was supposed to have a guest tonight, and we were going to play some um, some Dice Masters. Um, which I'm still going to play Dice Masters, but I'm going to do what's called gold fishing. Um, and that just simply means that I play without an opponent. Um, it's a way for me to kind of like test out different, um, you know, decks, uh, not decks, but in this case, different teams um, and kind of get a feel for how they're going to play. Um, and uh, yeah. So what is Dice Masters, you ask? Um, I can hear some of you guys. It's like, oh, man, you know, this guy's a real nerd. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. Um, and I'm into, you know, tabletop gaming of all stripes. But um, I got, had a buddy of mine who I was trying to get him on tonight, but he's uh, he's in, in a completely different location. And he left all his stuff, so he can't actually play Dice Masters with me. But he may pop in. We might see him either in the chat or he could... Uh, come on to the panel at some some point who knows depends on how long i go tonight probably not going to go as long as i had hoped um but do not fret tomorrow night um we're going to do this again and uh hopefully uh, i'll be able to have an opponent tomorrow night so um so yeah back to dice masters so it is a uh well it's a dice game but it has rules that give it more of a feel like a card game uh, like Magic, The Gathering, um, you know some some other um, popular card games you might you might see out there. Um, and uh, I avoided this game for the longest time because I don't generally like games of chance when it comes to just rolling dice. I like to play cards and you know and actually like use the cards. Um, there's variance enough in a deck whenever you're playing cards. So like to me there's a certain level of skill that comes with playing cards versus just uh, the luck of the dice. Right. And so one of my buddies brought in to, um, to our store, I'm actually um, kind of, I've got a storefront at during my day job um, that we are, you know, we're doing local in-store gaming um, on Thursday nights. And so he brought in this game, which we can't source yet. Um, I'm still working on distribution and plus this game has been on life support since COVID. Um, <clears throat> but, um, check it out. I've got the, the link to the game, uh, pinned to the chat. Um, so you can check it out. Uh oh, looks like we got a guest <laughs> and we'll see how this goes. This is one of my local friends, uh, Randy. Let's see. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, what's up? <laughs> Nothing much, man. I'm just trying to figure out how this works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So welcome, <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> um, you know, I typically, you know, usually my guests are in chat, so um, I don't typically, I, I, I won't. Um, I've kind of made the um, the decision not to have guests on on panel that are from our uh, creative community because I don't want to play favorites. I guess it's a political, you know, it's to me it's a political move, as far as um, not not having to do with politics in general, but having to do with you know the design space and preventing yeah. people from being jealous of each other and you know oh you let this person on you will let me on you know that kind of thing. It's like I don't I don't play that mess. You know what I mean? It's to me it's not a popularity contest. And I think I think it would be kind of fun to have some of you know some of our local guys, uh, such as yourself, on here just to you know shoot the bull and talk comics. And in this case, you know, I'm playing Dice Masters with myself. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? What's up with you, man? Nothing much. 
Just uh, got home from work. I stopped at Goodwill on the way down here. I'm peeling some stickers off, getting ready to list some things on eBay. Yeah. Yeah, that's always fun. Let me see. Let me let me see how to do this here. Um, solo layout. But I'm trying to see. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out <clears throat> um, Streamyards um, myself. Okay, I can't if I don't if I share stream. Let me see if I can. Yeah, it seems like I'm kind of creeping up on you with a black screen here. So yeah, I see that. It, do you not have an avatar? Oh. Well, hey, that's something. <laughs> I can, yeah, I can do that. Um, let me see if it will let me. Stops my camera anyway. Yeah, that, which is fine. I don't know. Um, I don't have a camera, so it's just a black screen. But let me see. Okay, so I can solo on you, but I want to solo on me. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let me have it. Oh wait, here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. There we go. That way you're. <laughs> there we go. You, you can't be seen. <laughs> You can be heard, but you cannot be seen. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, man, shoot. Um, so, where were you you uh, you sent me that picture yesterday of um, of the uh, what was it those yeah the trading cards? Where were you, man? I was at I was up in Clarksville. Um, those Plasm trading cards. They were there was an oddity store okay. right outside of uh, Austin P. Nice. I saw all kinds of cool stuff in there, but. Is it? Yeah, is they it, got some good deals. Is it right there on that strip, like down? Yeah, the... it's right on Riverside, right off the side of Jefferson Street up there. Oh, okay, Riverside. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I know they had a, they had a comic shop that they were trying to trying to do down there in that expensive uh, strip. Just like we're talking within walking yeah. distance of the of the campus there, off of uh, Madison. But um, but yeah, man. Yeah. So. So, uh, folks, the um, Austin P is actually that's my alma mater. That's where I went to college and got my degree in it. That's you graduated, right? Uh, I'll be graduating this winter. Oh, nice! I'm a class behind, apparently. So, <laughs> gotcha. Well, I can't believe. I mean, it's been it's been freaking 13 years since I graduated from there, man. Like time has just flown. Um. <clears throat> And uh, of course, I was a non-traditional student. I was in the army, uh, went there under the GI Bill and all that jazz. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I transferred there from um, down in Georgia. I'd started my school in down in, in Augusta State, which I know you know that, but I'm kind of doing that for the class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, man, so so all right. So you're in that that oddity shop. What else do they do? They have any comics? Uh, it's kind of a little bit of everything in that place. You know, they just get in random stuff. I'm not really sure where they source from, but I know they like source from a local taxidermist and a bunch of different, they have all kinds of crazy stuff in there. Taxidermist? Wow. Uh, yeah, I've seen them. They sell like a lot of that, you know, like animals in a jar and that kind of thing, like the wet yeah. specimens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like what you'd find at a, like in those old carnival sideshows. Yeah, yeah. And then they also have a, uh, <laughs> Some like you know more traditional taxidermy, like you know like fish on a plaque and that kind of stuff. But they also have I've seen them sell human bones before, like old medical stuff. Wow. Yeah, they've got it's an interesting place. It's kind of a it, it's a hole in the wall kind of place because it's like back behind an old car wash. But, oh man, I'm trying and I'm trying to visualize. You said it's on Riverside. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. I think. I think I'm. Is it? You know where? Um, you know where College Street is, right? Like the big hill yep. that goes right up to Austin P. Yep. Yeah, it's like one street over. Okay. So it's not quite to Crossland, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not quite. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So what I was doing here, um, before you came on, was I was talking about um, Dice Master crashing the party. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, party of one. <laughs> uh, your table's ready. It, it's uh, <laughs> that was actually my my mom. Um, she uh, she had a, a limousine service that she owned. Uh, she was a sole proprietor, and then that's what she named her limousine service. And it was in Clarksville, uh, a matter of fact, um, way back in the in the late nineties, uh, early two thousand. She called it party of one or more. So <laughs> it's kind of 
kind of apropos. All right, let's see here. Oh, we got uh, Duck uh, Duck Bacon. Is uh, he says party of three? Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, sure, you can be in our party. <laughs> Any jackalopes? Yeah, do they have jackalopes in your oddity store? Jackalopes. <laughs> yeah, you know what that <laughs> they is. Jack they had some jack o' lanterns in there. Have yeah, you, the jack o' the uh, yeah. rabbits with the ears. I'm sure they'll probably if they yeah. get anything in like that. I'm, that's yeah. right up their alley. Yeah, rabbits with the the deer antlers. <laughs> yeah, like from uh, was that uh, America's Funniest People with Dave Coulier? You'd be like, you know, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, where else? Where else am I going to be able to do that? Right. <laughs> um. But yeah, Duck Bacon, he's he's one of our OGs. Um, he's kind of been he's been hanging with me for a while. I know I know there's probably a lot of other folks streaming tonight. Um, but you know, I don't care. I don't I don't let it get me down. Um, I actually get a lot of a lot of folks rewatching as long as I keep it somewhat brief. I think once I go like past um an hour, it kind of gets gets crazy. Yeah. Um man, so so yeah, so Dice Masters is this. Have you have you ever heard of it? I Aside haven't. Are you talking about it? Maybe no. Aside from, yeah. <laughs> is so, this the game you were trying to sell at the convention last time? No, 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 no. That was Smash Masters. Oh, Smash which, Masters. which by the way, um, uh, just a shameless plug. I've actually got it up on Fund My Comic now, and. Um, I'm selling it, uh, and folks are, you know, they're buying it. And as soon as they back it, it's, it's kind of set up like a, um, like a, uh, a regular campaign, but it's yeah. almost like it's, uh, like it's in, in demand, if you will. And so as soon as they <laughs> buy one, I just go ahead and ship it out to them. Um, yeah. and I'm still splitting the proceeds with, uh, John O'Neill over at dark unicorn games. Um, and so, you know, he's, he's happy cause he, all he did was front me the product, and so I'm, I'm selling the stuff, man. Getting it, yeah. getting it done. I'm one of two games on there right here, two card games on there right now. So, for him, like for you know, for us. But uh, what's so cool is like you know, half of the proceeds go to him, and then the other half I use for you know, going towards Chrome Dog. So, but, but yeah, I'm all the time talking about Chrome Dog, or uh, not, not as, not as much as I should be, because. Uh, Luke Stone, my artist, is um, he's busy um, building out fun my comic. That's kind of his his endeavor, um, and uh, he's been extremely busy with that. And so we haven't had any new art, and I feel like I've I feel like I've run out of runway um, with the uh, the ten page ash can. I've really beat people over the head with that art, and so I'm waiting to get more pages so that I can show off all the cool um, characters, you know, because yeah. I'm going to introduce some other some other characters. And um, one thing, and you might be able to, to speak on this, but one thing I've noticed lately in comics uh, in general is this, like, this tendency for folks to be into cheesecake. Do you know what I mean by cheesecake? <laughs> Vaguely, yeah. So, like, like, you know. Like the dude covers? No, or no, that's beefcake. No? Yeah, that's oh, beefcake. Okay. Gotcha. Cheesecake is the other side. So it's all the, all the you know, scantily clad or nude um comic book characters on the covers if you've been on whatnot and you've looked oh yeah uh, looked yeah. on there you know there's all these naked women you know you got like naked zatanna for crying out loud right here yeah. she is uh in dice masters um but uh <laughs> it's like um and so uh even in you know in the indie comic space um and in comics gate there's there's people who are into um like they really, they really dig on the on the super sexy chicks. Which I mean, hey, why not, right? Um, and Chrome Dog is not super sexy. Like I mean, he is, I guess, from a <laughs> metallic werewolf <laughs> kind of perspective. But as a, uh, you know, <laughs> as the fairer sex, he doesn't really represent that uh, that that side of the equation. But he has a he actually has a couple of friends in the uh, in the comic book that have yet to be revealed. Um, as far as like artwork or any of, any of that because the pages just don't quite exist yet like they're i hey i can show you the sexiness of of some text on a page fr from the from the script but all that's <laughs> going to do is is give is give you spoilers and leave you wanting because there's not much you know <laughs> not not 
it's not very visually appealing. So I'm looking forward to being able to, to kind of reveal those uh, the, the the sexier variety of characters uh, from around his uh, his universe. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I've seen it. It's pretty interesting. I don't really know why they do all these like like the Pharaoh's Lounge comics. I'm sure you've seen those. Pharaoh's Lounge. Around. Yeah, yeah. There's they're a specific sort of brand that recover comics. So they take oh. printed runs and they recover them with like nude characters. Which are most of where a lot of these nude covers are coming from, but they'll like oh, they'll okay. just wrap like an X Men comic or like some random Vampirella comic with a picture of like something to like Betty Boop or just anything like anything at all they can throw on the cover that's unrelated to the series, you know? Just... Huh? And it's called Pharaoh's Lounge, like like the like an Egyptian pharaoh. Nah, like I think it's like F A R O. I think it's just Pharaoh's oh, Lounge. Gotcha. F-A-R-O, gotcha. Oh, oh, yeah, no. Oh my, what? Okay. Safe search on, guys. <laughs> yeah, safe, safe search on for these ones. <laughs> some, at least put the sensor bar with the, the brand over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I can't, I can't even share a screen on that stuff. What, anyway, well, I wonder where, you know, that, and that's the other thing. I've noticed that there's different people on whatnot be able to i mean they're and they're selling these things for like 70 dollars a pop and you go on kickstarter and there's like tons of um you know of uh, comic books on there that just have, have all these alternate art covers with uh, oh, yeah. all the cheesecake a man can handle i guess which i mean it's like what are we you know i i guess hats off to them for doing it i suppose sex appeal is one thing but i mean as far as i'm concerned yeah chrome I don't know. Maybe it's the writer in me. I really, I'm, I'm, I'm into the story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah. And with that, um, you know, kind of getting back to, to Dice Masters, um, I never really was into DC characters much. I do remember um, growing up, I, I, I had an affinity for, for Batman and uh, Green Lantern. Um, Cause I thought, I just thought they were cool characters. Right. And, uh, and then, but I remember like trying to sit down and read some of the, some of the comic books and I just never could, I don't know what it was. DC just never really held my, they, they never really held my attention like Marvel did. And I think a lot of people uh, suffer with that. Um, yeah. in the business, they call people like us Marvel zombies, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not as attached to Marvel, um, which I definitely, you know, if I'm just going to pick between the two, I would say Marvel every time. But like yeah. DC, DC for me, like I, I really liked Cyborg and the Teen Titans and some of that stuff when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And because I guess, you know, the animated series was around when I was a kid. But, um, oh, I, yeah. Like, I really liked Justice the League Flash Unlimited when I was whatever. really little. For oh, whatever yeah. Reason. The, the um, TV show Flash? Like the yeah, like the animated Flash, and there was also the animated like Batman series and stuff that came out in the early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I really uh, liked that stuff when I was younger. Um, okay, you're saying now you're saying the Batman, which was not this, right? It was the re-release of Batman. Yeah, okay. yeah, it was. It was. Uh, yeah, it was called the Batman. Yeah, I remember. I remember thinking that Joker that they had in that one was kind of weird. He seemed kind of kind of weird. The Mark Hamill Joker, I think, is the. Well, he was he was from this right from the Batman uh, the animated series from the from the uh, early to mid nineties. Yeah. But then they reinvented it in gotcha. um, in this show called The Batman, which I, I don't know. They they adopted some of the same animated style, but they they retold the stories in a different way. I don't know. Yeah. It, it was definitely for the next generation. So, but. But yeah, so is that what you're talking about? The one that has Joker? Yeah, the Batman. I, like I grew up on the Marvel. Justice League, you know. Unlimited. Yeah. Yeah, like the, the two thousand uh, stuff, but. Yeah, John Stewart as uh, as the Green Lantern. A little bit of Batman Beyond, here and there. Yes. But oh my gosh, yes. But it was definitely all like mostly leaning towards Batman and some of that stuff. But like getting older and back into comics, and everything like. I definitely saw an appeal in Vertigo print, like um, 
Constantine and Swamp Thing and all that kind of stuff. Well, but. well I, I got this one for you, buddy. You want to trade? <laughs> <laughs> Some Doom Patrol? Yeah, I've got a bunch yeah. of Doom Patrol for the Ghost. Yeah, this, it was yeah, an this interesting a, run. I guess. I mean, maybe the may, you know maybe before they went Vertigo, this book is weird. Um, <laughs> some of the sadistic and masochistic things they do in in these in the Ver DC Vertigo stuff is just that it is it's on some other level, man. That gets a little like, out there sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But I will tell you, <laughs> if you get a chance, um, and folks who who watched my last show, if you get a chance to pick pick up this trade paperback, it's worth every penny. Uh, Green Lantern Rebirth, man. It is so good. Um, Ethan Van Skyver and uh, Jeff Johns. Like, it, it definitely reignited my my love for Hal Jordan uh, Green Lantern, because that's he was the original Hal, uh, Green Lantern that I, I, I loved when I was, I was a kid. And then when I saw Justice League with uh, John Stewart, I'm like, who's this guy? He looks cool, too. You know? And uh, but I, I never really, I never could get into reading the comics. You know, cartoons are, are fine and everything, but comics just never had any sway. So when I got into this game, um, Dice Masters has all these different licenses. Okay, they got um, what it is is it's owned by Wiz Kids. Have you ever heard of Wiz Kids? Is that like the kids branch of Wizards of the Coast? No, no, no. But that, <laughs> that is a great question. Oh my gosh. No, they're not related at all. Um, so have you ever heard of a game called Hero Clicks or um, Mage Knight? Mm -mm. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm completely dating myself here, I guess. <laughs> so, so basically, uh, anyway long as the long and short of it is uh whiz kids is a uh tabletop um, gaming company they are famous for uh, a game called mage knight and then later uh marvel and then dc themed uh, hero clicks and of course they they gained a whole bunch of different licenses and then they would create you know they've got they, they still make other games and whatnot they they're known for their miniatures right so D, &D they'll make D, &D miniatures gotcha. um and so um so with those licenses that they got with uh or from neca which i don't know if you're familiar with neca it's the national yeah. entertainment collectibles association so neca has licenses to like just about everything in entertainment i mean so much so many properties and they generally use their licenses for making statues and toys and stuff, right? Well, so WizKids, they're somehow related to NECA now, but like they're, they're, I don't even know how, but they just are. And so they took some of those licenses and what they did was they, they, they had a game that they made called, uh, I think it's called Quarriers. <laughs> and, and so like it's the word quarry and then the word warriors so i guess it's dwarven kind of kind of stuff i've actually not played uh quarriers but the reason that's important is that that is the system that this game is in okay gotcha. and so when they adopted licenses from marvel dc uh Yu -Gi -Oh, ninja turtles wwe uh oh my gosh they got um um warhammer 40k right gotcha. they had that for just a little while um, they they made all these different sets, and this game is like the original multiverse. Like like for example, even though I'm playing all DC heroes and villains here, I can, you know, for example, I can bring in. I've got a whole box of um, like these are all Warhammer 40k uh, in here, and so I could throw in a I could splash a 40k in there. I mean, because it's all about the abilities and what they do. Um, and so you can kind of bring in like whatever you like. Uh, same with Marvel. Like I could splash in Marvel if I want, but I'm, I'm I, I've made it a, a point to collect mostly DC and then some of the other properties for whatever reason. Like I've just I've gotten such a distaste in my mouth. Well, I say for whatever reason. People who are familiar with me definitely know why, um, <laughs> and I have no problem explaining it again. Um, but Marvel has really ticked me off over the years um they've they've destroyed a lot of the the you know beloved characters um that i've i've really enjoyed the the latest one is the punisher and i don't know if you heard about what happened in the punisher uh not really <sighs> sure i mean i know they rebranded as logo oh it's a worse. little bit 
yeah no it's worse it's oh, not a more <laughs> yeah it's not a little bit they they completely changed his logo um completely changed his power set and then now in the storyline he actually um was it was successful to get the hand because he worked he worked for the hand and had the hand working for him if it were as it were and apparently the motivation was to try to resurrect his dead wife maria yeah and using it, like electra's resurrection powers or something i, I bought yeah. a couple of those comics exactly well in this last issue um she gets resurrected and she winds up divorcing him because that's what she had planned before they got gunned down in that in uh, central park and so she <laughs> she div she divorces him you know takes takes all his basically takes all of his assets sells the, the uh, all the different safe houses divides the, the the amount she takes half the other half she donates to some charity or whatever and then just kind of leaves him you know like to like essentially commit suicide if you will no i don't know if he does like i don't think he does i think what happens is he winds up uh, going into another realm or whatever shepherding children i don't know it's weird like it got really weird and that's it like that's where they've left him so he is effectively no longer the punisher frank castle whatever form he is is no longer r really the punisher because he no longer has the motivation anymore I mean, he no longer has a motive. You take away his motive, and then you trap right. him in some alternate realm or something. Yeah, basically, that's that's essentially what happened. I to guess him. they decided, hmm, the Punisher's controversial. How can we get rid of him? Well, and it, it's the you know it's the emblem. You know, apparently, because the emblem has become so uh, widely used in you know right wing circles, they feel like they have to destroy the image. I mean, it'd be like doing the same thing to Batman if, for some reason, you know, the bat was something everybody liked to wear. If, uh, on if the Marvel was so concerned about it, why don't they just <laughs> they just start going out of their way to like copyright strike all of these companies that are making these Marvel logos for cars? Because I don't, I don't yeah, know. well, because well, okay. So I I have a feeling that the re that oh boy, so that that the most famous that we've that we've got now. The, the most famous Punisher logo came from the movie, the uh, the movie Punisher with Thomas Jane, right? Gotcha. So that was under um, Jonathan Hensley. Well, that was Jonathan Hensley's uh, design. Like he was the director, right? And then yeah. whoever, I think Avi Arad and, and the different people who produced the movie. I'm not sure if they actually trademarked it. Um, gotcha. I could be, I could be wrong. I haven't, I haven't done my homework, but I don't think it's trademarked. And so it's almost fair game for anyone to do do things with that. But at the same time, I mean, there's so many different versions of the skull logo that you know Marvel just they they just had to completely bury it. And so the way you know the way they did it initially was to make this oni looking thing. So, but anyway, at the risk of <laughs> going on too far, I have created um, I have created a character. Um, who is my version of, um, you know, of Punisher in my own universe? So, um, you know, and more more on that soon once I can learn how to draw better. Because <laughs> I, I, he's the kind of guy like he's one that I want to just start from the, you know, from the bottom and just start like working on him and you know tweaking and you know really getting a feel like learning how to draw as well as you know making this character mine from the ground up you know yeah. and uh but he's gonna be you know he's gonna be my my punisher my you know my version of the punisher um his origin is gonna be similar but definitely not the same gotcha. um but you know the world needs a hero like the player an anti-hero if you will um like the punisher you know someone who's willing to stand up for the innocent and 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 has no problem taking no prisoners <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like you know, the Punisher's also changed a lot over the years. Like he's just gone through all these different. He's been more violent at times than he had to be. True. And then there's been times where he's like, you know, killing petty drug dealers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, right. Uh, and he's that's kind of all over the place, depending on who's writing him. Exactly. You know, and I think it comes down to which laws are more important than than the others. You know, in the minds of the the writer. Right. Oh boy! Hey, we got another guest. So party of four, <laughs> we've got Tex Zombie <laughs> in the house. Um, How's it going? What's going on, Tex? 
I'm trying to remember. I think I think I gave you. Um, I think I gave you privileges. Yeah. Okay. He's got. He's a. He's a moderator. So. Yeah, we're uh, so we're just sitting here chilling, uh, Tex. We're um, we're. Uh, I, I I started out. I was going to to goldfish this game. I, actually, originally I was going to be playing against a buddy of mine, Chaos Chris, but he's um, on the road from um, from Kentucky. So I don't know if he's going to be able to make it in uh, in time. So. But I will be streaming tomorrow, and he has confirmed that he will be in here, so we can play some play some dice masters. But I was gonna do what's called gold fishing, but I don't know. Talking is fun too. <laughs> hello, hello. We got another person in here. Oh hey, yeah, Martin. yeah. How's it going? What is up? See, there's Batman. It's like as soon as as soon as I say Batman, and there he there he shows up <laughs> with his with his wonderful Batman '89 logo. Um, so, so, all right. So back to, back to Dice Masters. Um, the thing, the thing that I appreciate about DC is their, their character designs are like, they're second to none, man. Like, I love what they do with their characters. And so I may not be able to get into their story because a lot of them are, I mean, I'm just going to be point blank. They're readers, man. Like when you sit down with a DC book, it's yes, there's action, but it is a reader. Um, you know, there's definitely a lot more um, going on in the in the text than uh, than the standard Marvel Marvel book, uh, excluding the uh, Chris uh, Claremont stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he got pretty verbose in his in his stories. Okay, so, but um, but regardless, you know, I I come when I come to comics, I come for story, but I also come for the action, um, you know, and I don't need like umpteen uh thought bubbles like everywhere and in uh and um you know, it's like there's dialogue yeah i get it there's time for dialogue but come on man let's keep it going let's keep it moving todd mcfarlane shout out to oh the, yes the wordiest man on the planet oh my <laughs> gosh kind of you just reminded me yeah and then not <laughs> to mention like how many times do we have to go through all of like I f it, it always felt like every spawn comic we had to relive his trauma with Wanda and, oh, and yeah. the whole like going through the whole thing of him losing his life and uh, 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 it's like <laughs> get on with it you know and I, I kind of there were times I, I mean I'm not gonna lie I felt that way with Frank uh you know Frank Castle you know having to relive his his uh his trauma but I mean I guess I guess as long as you hit it with a short beat and then you just you know get to stepping um but anyway so with that in in dice masters i get to be able to have the different characters and it doesn't really matter what the story is um we kind of as we play the game i guess in a really weird way the story kind of comes out i mean if you want to make it narrative um but the way it works is you have uh every player starts with you know eight sidekick dice um and each one of these are going to be your your initial resource generators um and each of the cards represent how much the dice cost uh, to be able to play and the little symbol here i don't know if it's clear enough to really show but the little symbol here i'll just use batman uh, the yellow lantern batman which is a story in and of itself um but uh yellow lantern batman has a mask symbol and he costs four so as long as one of his energy is a mask you can and, and the rest of the energy can be any any other type um, you can actually feel them, and so, you know. I got it. So it's kind of like magic. It's like you know the numbers yeah. just colorless. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. But you, instead of tapping cards, you're rolling dice. You're you know, and and the dice, you've got you know, you've got a lightning resource, you've got a um, shield resource, fist resource, mask resource. You have a wild, and then there's a um, this one is a um, a sidekick character die. Okay. So it's a zero level, and then it's a one one, like magic. So you've got a you know it it hits for one, and it has a defense of one. So if it takes that if the if it takes that one damage, it's dead. And deb damage is not persistent in this game either, because otherwise, I mean, how would you track it? It's on a daggum die, right? Yeah. But um, so you know, essentially, what you do is you take, um, you know, when you when you roll, you roll four dice every time. So you're drawing four dice. 
So, I mean, in this case, and you leave, so I'm putting them in the dice bag, right? I'm putting all eight in here, and then I draw out four, and then I got my four dice, and then I take and I just kind of roll them over here, and then I bring them here to the reserve pool just to show what all I got, and I get one reroll. So it, in that way, it kind of feels like Yahtzee, if you've ever played Yahtzee. Yeah, um, it's kind of what I was thinking already. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, so I have an opportunity, and since this is the beginning of the game, I can't attack um, the first turn anyway. Um, so I don't really want to have a minion yet. Um, all of my characters, the way I've built my team, is they're all masks, except for Robin. He's a, he's actually, you know what? Since I've got that, I might as well, I can field Robin. So yeah, I'll go ahead and take that, and then I will um, I will spend these. So that's one of each of those, and at least one of them is, uh, is a defense. Robin costs three, so then I just put Robin in my use pile. So there he is. And so that's basically my, my turn, and so the next player would go um, and then come back to me. Now what you see, and then they'll take their turn, and then, you know, and, and play kind of goes back and forth that way. Oh boy, we got some we got some comments. What do we got going on here? Uh, oh, <laughs> nothing much. Setting up stuff to get a game setting up. Oh, like tabletop setting. Now you're talking some role playing game action. Spider Man is the worst offender of reliving the tragedy. You know, you're <laughs> how many probably, times is Uncle Ben gonna die though? Yeah, no, you're you're right. I mean, in Hollywood for sure, right? Yeah, and maybe that's maybe that's my problem is you know it's it's like uh, and milking the same cow over and over I it feel really like. is it's like in hollywood just, especially can we just move on and tell new stories i mean that's yeah you know and and then there's also the raising of the stakes is it i mean was daredevil season one or season two just that boring with him you know fighting crime at the street level you know, or even um, like Luke Cage. You know, if you, if if anyone, you know, if you've if you've seen the the Netflix shows, was was that really so boring? Because I mean, superheroes, that's what they do. You know, they take out the garbage. They don't always have to be intergalactic. You know, spacefaring, gonna beat the snot out of some god kind of characters. You know, anyway, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> uh, but. But yeah, I could, there, there's space I for both, but it's like you know, yeah. Superman fans and but let's see, that's part of my problem. <laughs> see, you got the you got the Yellow Lantern Batman there. Yeah, that's already kind of like you well, know, hey. Batman is the character that yeah. fights the street level crime, while Superman handles cosmic crime. But no, we've got to give Batman. <laughs> well, so you know. the, but but I will say this. Okay, all right, so. You, you brought it up, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, like, I, I want to go down this hole um, here because I've read. Here's the here's the thing. I'm also I'm going to pitch this. Just I, I'm telling you, man, this book, this this rebirth, and then the No Fear, which is the follow up uh, trade paperback, right? So these these two books, th this one by the end of it, you can tell it leads into the Blackest Night uh, stuff. And I'm telling you, man, the the there's a rivalry and it's it's widely known so much so that they make fun of it in the lego batman movie right the rivalry between batman and uh and green lantern um and so in 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 these in rebirth especially um you know batman you gotta understand batman is all about using fear right and darkness which is completely opposed to what Green Lantern's about. Green Lantern's about light, and he's about like no fear or courage or yeah. you know uh, willpower. willpower, right? And so they're complete opposites. So it makes 100% sense for Batman to to use you know Yellow Lantern to com to completely combat and to you know nullify and to cancel out the green because you know Green's weakness is yellow and Yellow's weakness is green. It's you know throughout the comics, so. It's I don't know it, it works and so what they did in uh, in Dice Masters they created a set called the War of Light which is um, pinned in the um, 
in the chat is actually that's if you click that it goes directly to the dice masters war of light uh section just because i'm a little biased <laughs> I'm, I'm completely taken by uh by that part now granted you're only gonna see uh let's see we have this is a war of light character that shane davis made uh larflees we've got parallax um in his full yellow uh parasitical form we've got batman as a yellow lantern so we got two you know these yellow lanterns. but these are the only like lanterns from that set but this one is a green lantern from a um the justice set uh, we got Poison Ivy from the Justice set. We have got Zatanna from the Justice League set. The question from the Justice League set, and um, I'm not really sure where Robin came from. He's probably from one of the packs. They got they had their own little they they had distribution. It was kind of weird. They had different like uh, booster packs that would come with two cards and two dice, um, and then they would do these little these uh, and they would they would do runs with different heroes. Anyway. But they've changed the model now. Now that they're bringing the game back and they're and they're making it more um, accessible, and where you can get like more dice and more cards at once, and it's not so randomized to where people you know aren't shelling out so much cash to you know get so little. I guess I don't know, but yeah. it's a relatively inexpensive game as well. So whenever I goldfish, oh let me let me say this. Oh, oh right, okay. Let me. I said goldfish. So to, to those of you out there, when you play tabletop um, like card games or whatnot, and you're wanting to test out a deck, I kind of said this earlier before I had anyone in uh, in here uh, with me. Um, you, you you basically it's you're you're pretending that you're playing against uh, an opponent, and so this is uh, my you know goldfish or you know this fake opponent. This is his life total, and then this is mine over here. I'm kind of setting it up. I, I guess now that I've pushed this up far enough, I, I'll put my life total back here. But um, and what I'll do is, in other games, depending on how aggressive I, I'm trying, like I'm trying to be competitive with my my deck or whatever, I will make it so that every turn, this is almost like a one through four countdown on me. I'll be like, okay, I took five damage that turn. I took five damage that. You know what I mean? And so that way, I can see just how <laughs> how hard I'm I'm hitting my opponent who's completely defenseless right so but with this one yeah it's whatever <laughs> just wanted to show off my my love for this game um which not many people in our in our design space here in uh in the comics gate slash iron age land are doing this they're they're typically just complaining about well what we were complaining about when it, or what i was complaining about with punisher <laughs> <laughs> everything's all negative and this and that and they're always you know they always got to ax to grind about something but um oh by the way <clears throat> um i don't know if i told you randy but i'm going on vacation <clears throat> that's kind of why i'm doing these these two streams this week back to back because i will not be anywhere close to home for uh the next two weeks we're actually going to be traveling up the east coast oh yeah yeah um, i heard about that yeah mm -hmm. and and my first my first stop is going to be at Heroes Con, where I'm hoping I can get um, Billy Tucci to confirm that this is she's uh, first appearance. Because oh, yeah. according to what what it says in this book, toward like at the end, it, it 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 makes it sound like this is this is her first appearance. So uh, regardless, I want him to sign it because I mean I I really look up to him as a as a fellow creator and someone who has you know made a career strictly of being uh, independent and he's yeah. he's killing it man he's doing such an awesome job and then I want to I'm gonna meet Dan Frega I'm gonna have him sign this uh, this issue of Black Flag number three Maximum Press back in the day back when comics were just so over the top awesome. <laughs> And then here's the Art T. Bear, uh, black and white, number one. The explosive first issue that will give justice a whole new meaning. <laughs> and uh, he's killing it in our design space as well. I'm not sure if he's going to be there or not, but I'm taking it along just in case. And then this one is a lot of fun. I think I might have bought this one off of you, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, probably so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> probably this for is a dollar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is a Venge Blade, right? cutting yeah. edge parody the baddest of the bad so 
we were talking about cheesecake a while ago, right? And I just, yeah. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta show this, man. So this book, um, oh yeah, yeah, the, the way, Maximum Press was pretty much uh, <laughs> in the time when Comics Code Authority still existed. Was, yeah. was the closest thing you could get. So well, so, the... so we got so so this this was this is a uh, an ad on the back for uh, Supreme when uh, when Rob Liefeld got Alan Moore to write him. So how cool is that, man? Yeah, that's so Supreme cool. was a pretty all right series. I I enjoyed the first couple issues of that one. But uh, so w- what we have here is we have this this Avenge Blade, who's like a mix of uh, Witch Blade and Evangeline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> already uh, independent characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and what's fun about this is all of these different pages are penciled by all these different people and inked by all these different people, right? Yeah, so yeah. They, they just they, they went ham on this book. It's so much fun. But what's funny here is we've got this the, <laughs> these two these two um, they they look like breasts. <laughs> these are like <laughs> the towers where these where these women are meeting, and it says uh, only D cups allowed <laughs> right here. <laughs> Oh man, um, it says uh, welcome, ladies and uh, ladies, to the annual meeting of the Bad Girl Club. I'm your master of ceremonies, Blunder Woman. <laughs> and here's and there she is. She looks like Cher, kind of in that <laughs> from mine. <laughs> so funny, but yeah. And so we've got all these all these different uh, characters. I guess that's supposed to be a riff on, on um, Zealot. Um, yeah, looks like and, it. And then this is uh, Veronica, I think. Yeah, from, uh, yeah. or Betty. <laughs> from or the Betty. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know the difference. Yeah. We got Angela over here. I think this looks like. Um, I was gonna say Polaris, but it might. It might even be Riptide. Yeah, probably um, Riptide. And then here's she, which she's color is off and she doesn't have her face painted up, but it, I think that's what they're going for. I'm trying to get this reference here, but. I'm sure someone would know, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So we got so right here. We need the power of Avenge Blade, and so here's I don't know what the heck. Oh my gosh, official jerk shot, 1996. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. And then we got you know Vampirella, um, you know parody stuff. But yeah, they, they get they get pretty wild in this book, um, especially with the blood and guts kind of off. So you know, most of it's off-screen violence. We got this she character. What they? Let's see. I'm trying to figure out what they call Miss Saigon. I think is what <laughs> what they call her. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, and I got Blindside number one. <clears throat> I was thinking about taking it along. Um, oh, this is Yawn instead of Dawn. <laughs> 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 She's got the tears coming down her cheek. Um, but uh, yeah, it's. And then and then she cuts the head off of Evangeline, but she what does she call her? Uh, let's see, she's over here. She's like eating binge purge, binge purge. Uh, angel blood, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what she calls her, but it, it's funny. But yeah, this is Avenge Blade. It's the character, and there's her severed head. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it it was a. Uh, it's definitely a, a riot and worth every penny of that dollar <laughs> <laughs> to me. I, um, you know, and I, I've, I've told you this, I, I make no secret. I'm not, I'm definitely not a speculator. I will say that thanks to you, I have my prized possession and I get to, you know, Hey folks, I know if you've been here with me since the beginning, you'll recognize this because I, I, I try to f- I flex every now and then on this new stand <laughs> edition that you sold me. It's yeah. like, yes, yes. And, he, and I don't care. Actually, you know what? To me, this adds even more charm, this break, because I'm, I'm just going to tell you, man, it's like there's only been so many um, uh, done. And yeah. I think I want to so say you even on uh, record. Exactly. And I think there's only like I think the highest was like a 9.6. Yeah. But there's really only just a handful that exist. And I've never seen one that, you know, I've never seen another one. I've, I've only ever seen the direct, which doesn't have the barcode. So the newsstand copy, like that's my prized possession. I will, ne- it will never leave my, uh, it will never leave my possession. Nope. Yeah. Funny story about that one. 
I okay. actually uh, <laughs> so I I uh, sold it on eBay, right? Okay. So here I am. I go go to the post office. And I didn't have the packing materials at home, so I put the bubble wrap and everything in the car, and I'm like, I'm just gonna go grab a flat rate shipping box and pack it there. So <laughs> I go and get the pack materials. I'm gonna take it back out to the car, you know, and pack it on my trunk. So no. I set the I, I set this pit comic. I sold it for like almost a hundred dollars. Oh set, wow! Set it up on the set it up on the roof of the car. And the it was windy that day, so then the wind just catches that comic and throws oh. it across the parking lot, man. And it shattered the corner of that uh that cave. Oh, so and you I had did to it. send a refund. <laughs> I had to send a refund on everything that day. Oh, and then man. I think I sold it to you for like ten dollars or something. Yeah, it was fifteen. <laughs> fifteen Dang, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. What'd you buy it for? Like, did you have it slabbed? Uh, no, I think I, I bought, actually, I, I had a lot where I had bought several things off of someone. Okay. Um, and I had two copies of New Stand Pit. Um, I think I might have had them both at the convention. I'm not sure. Where's the other I one? I still got the other copy somewhere floating around in here. Dude, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I really want it, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, it's crazy. But yeah, yeah. I, th so I think I gave forty-five dollars for both copies and like some other stuff too. So neat, I love it. That's so cool. Um, and so, um, and then Duck Bacon says yawn, and laugh. He's like laughing about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I always thought Dawn, all she was was eye candy. You know, it's like. Did, was there yeah. ever anything that goes on in her comics? Because I, I, I just remember seeing her plastered everywhere in, in my wizard magazines, you know, <laughs> and, and on tra trading cards and stuff. What is it? You know, it's the Cyrus print from back in the day. I'm not even sure if Cyrus still prints comics. Cyrus? I don't is think it Cyrus or is it serious? I, I, ha I have no Hang idea. On. Cyrus comics. Is Maybe it? serious. Like the, you know, like the star. Yeah, stuff. it is. It's serious. I always thought of Cyrus for some reason. All right, yeah. well, here that shows you how much I know about Dawn. But yeah, <laughs> well, I uh, <laughs> I've I've bought quite a few Dawn comics because they creep up every now and then in like the fifty cent bins at like Great Escape and stuff. But really, I just, I, I like the art. The art's yeah. cool. Okay. Um, usually they're not in the best shape when they creep. Sometimes you get them in like the dollar bins at like Rick's Comic City or something. But well, hopefully the pages um, aren't stuck together. But <laughs> <laughs> That's only Sorry. there's a lot of ink in those comics, you know. Well, I'm, <laughs> you, you're saying that I, I finally I just got that, you know. I, that's my brain. Um, <laughs> no, I know, and I, I'm, I'm not even I'm not even normally like that. I just <laughs> just couldn't help it. It reminded me of that. There was a joke in the the Beavis and Butthead ex, uh, Experience album. Um, there were I don't know. If, did, were you into Beavis and Butthead? at all not really <laughs> i guess i guess i'm a little i guess i am a little older <laughs> but when uh but back when beavis and butthead was like a real big deal in the in the mid 90s they um they came out with a um a, a cassette <laughs> well a cassette tape and then cd i'm sure but i had it on tape but it was a um it was called the beavis and butthead experience right and what it is is it was it was a it was kind of like a um are you familiar with beavis and butthead at all oh yeah Okay, so they would always like to me one of their fate like one of my favorite things about their shows is whenever they would watch they would do the mystery science three thousand uh, three thousand uh, with music videos right so they would sit and watch music videos and they would comment on the different things that they were seeing in the different videos that they watched and they had them watching they they had them watching cool stuff they had them watching really goofy stuff from you know from the eighties even you know the late eighties and early nineties and stuff and uh, um, <laughs> and this, uh, and so what they did that, that kind of spawned it because it, it was a craze, right? Um, for, for those of us that were, that were into Ninja Turtles, as we got older, it was kind of like, okay, now you can, you know, we can, we can get into something that's a little more, uh, adult, but still, you know, cause all of us, you know, even though I wasn't supposed to watch Beavis and Butthead, according to my, my, my dad and my mom, <laughs> Uh, my, or my, you know, my my stepmom, I would watch, uh, with you know, over at, <laughs> over at my uh, at my mom's house on the weekends because she had cable, 
right? <laughs> and so, so she let me watch them. Um, <laughs> she was a cool mom. <laughs> um, you know, wasn't real strict, and um, and so I watched them uh, over there. Caught every episode, man. I would record them on VHS and all that jazz, and and just rewatch them. And um, but they they did these. They did this um, this album. Where they had all these different songs and they they did skits in the in in between the different songs um and uh, and some of the songs were written for um for the album so like um it was a primus did a song that was uh you know and of course a lot of people they, they recognize primus as doing the the uh, the theme song for um south park which i don't know if it still is hmm. a thing uh on south park but it certainly was when i was growing up that was another show we weren't promise, supposed to I didn't watch. Know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. You know, at the beginning, it was like, uh, "Welcome." Uh, was that? Uh, what, what he says, um, "Come on down, South Park. We're gonna have ourselves a time." Anyway, that's uh, Les Claypool of um, of Primus. <laughs> you know, and they even turned him into a cartoon. It's kind of funny. Uh, Tech Zombie says they were huge. Loved them. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, Beavis and Butthead, man. They're they they're I, that trope of the two like. The, it was always the, the the brunette dude and the blonde guy that were, you know, they're both like dropouts, right? So it would extend from, you know, I think the, I don't want to say the, I guess you could say one of the original, uh, you know, tropes of that was um, probably Cheech and Chong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, but, you know, and then like later on, I'm sure there's, there's others, but then you get to, um, was it Bill and Ted? You know, every it's always it's right. always like two two guys, and they're just not really that smart. Um, of course, we see it in Dumb and Dumber, and then um, uh, let's see where you got Beavis and Butthead, and then there was there. Uh, oh yeah, Wayne's World, right? You got Wayne and Garth, right? So <laughs> they're not quite, you know, they're not quite all there. And then of course later we got Jay and Silent Bob and all that. But anyway. The long and short of it is there's a skit on that album, the Beavis and Butthead Experience album, where they um, or they act like they they found the, uh, Anthrax. Are you familiar with that band, Anthrax? It's yeah. A heavy metal band. They found their tour bus and they and they invite them up on the tour bus and they go through this whole thing and and they had uh, they had this this. Uh, this album with all these pictures of these naked women. Of course, it's all described, right? Because it's like a radio play, if you will, on the album. So it's dramatized. And uh, and they're talking about how um, these naked women are, are, are posed in all these different letters of the alphabet, right? And one of the guys says, you know, yeah, you should see O and U, right? <laughs> and, and all of a sudden he's like, um, one of the guys, as they're talking, one of the guys is like, "Hey, where'd the album go?" He's like, "I think I saw the blonde kid run to the bat, you know, run to the bathroom with it." <laughs> and, then, and then at the end of it, he's like, um, "You know, he finally, they finally wrenched the door open on him." Again, all of this is like a radio play, and so they wrench the door open on him, and he and he and he comes out, and they 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 take the they take it back, and then he's like, he says, "Oh man, they're all stuck together." And <laughs> so when you said that about Dawn, <laughs> we're getting around to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, exactly. and and then it went right into the Anthrax song that was on the album. So, <laughs> but um, but yeah. <sighs> um, yeah, speaking of Beavis and Butthead, yeah. I actually have a copy of uh, the game, Beavis and Butthead, the game for Genesis. Yes. of William McKinney here. I actually bought it from him. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wow. bought, it, bought it the Genesis and some games off of him one time. Well, that's awesome. Well, I'm, so, well, let's see. William McKinney. Um, I mean, he was, uh, he hung uh, out at our stand where we set up in Columbia. You know, I've known him for all these months, and I didn't know his last name, or <laughs> or if this is even his real last name. <laughs> I just know him as as either Jesse, which is an inside joke that he can he can come on to onto the panel to explain. Um, <laughs> um, was he okay? He says nothing much. Setting up stuff to get a game setting up. Yeah, I don't, what, I don't. I'm curious what game he's wanting to set up because I think, I think he told me before the show. He said that he, um, 
he said he forgot to grab his game bag so he forgot his uh marvel crisis protocol and dice master so and he he's in florida right now so he's not anywhere near his stuff gotcha. um but yeah okay yeah yeah william yeah yeah he's yeah he's good people that's funny he had the beavis and butthead genesis yeah that the genesis game I, I remember it being much more fun than the super nintendo version um <laughs> But then again, I don't. I don't think a lot of a lot of those games don't really age well. Um, yeah. I. To me, I it feel was like the N sixty four has. You know. I don't okay. Know now, why. now. So, do you have a Nintendo sixty four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got most consoles here on hand somewhere. Because I'm lo I'm looking to get rid of mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm um I'm just I'm I'm over it, I guess. Cuz there's there's no the thing is I, I bought a um a um <clears throat> an adapter to to plug into uh HDMI and it won't um like it 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 hmm. looks like trash on my really like fancy TV. So yeah, I don't have an old I don't you know, I don't have an old television to play it on. Um, that's fair and you know if i had one that was at least like a 480 or whatever, whatever it was you got seven was it 480 and then 720 yeah. so if it was if it was like that that low high def back in the day right that would probably look decent but i, I just the other thing is i don't have a lot of time to play video games so as much as i would love to relive the nostalgia i'm i just and so i just see the value there i'm like man I'm sure there's someone out there that wants to, you know, buy all my games and buy my system. Plus, I've got the jump pack in it, so it has the, so you know, yeah. it can run games like uh, Perfect Dark, which I have a copy of, um, and uh, you know, so, so yeah, I'm trying to. I guess I'm I'm gonna have to wait till I come back from uh, vacation and sell it on, uh, sell it piecemeal on eBay. Because whatnot, they can have it. They can have whatnot. I do not like that app at all. <laughs> I, I would rather sit here and try to sell things, you know, basically linking, you know, using YouTube and linking to my eBay than to be an auctioneer on there. Just saying. Yeah, it's just not my, it's I, not I my had bag. problems with whatnot personally. As yeah. I'm kind of invested 30 ish hours into whatnot and walked away with four or five dollars. Oh man, it's worse. It's worse for me. I like I didn't get anything that first night because it they were all floppies and they basically I was charging too much for shipping. But it's I was charging what it's like how much yeah. it actually cost to ship. And I was well, I, mean, I ship well, using Gemini mailers, so I mean it's you're gonna get right. you know you're gonna get your product that's not all jammed which is up in your industry mailbox. standard. Which I mean I have that problem on eBay too. You know even selling. Selling comics that are worth ten or twelve dollars, people don't want to pay six dollars shipping. But I'm like, you know, find something else on the store, order yeah, two, exactly. I'll combine the shipping on you. You know, and you'll the second exactly. one's fifty cents. <laughs> it's exactly. not not that big of a deal, but I know it. And so it's kind of like, okay, well, I've got some books that McKay's wouldn't take that I'm. I'm I guess I'll try to sell on eBay because you know physical media does sell pretty good. I've got a bunch of movies. I'm going to try to sell on there too. Well, that so, was supposed to be the whole catch with whatnot is getting the same people to sit in the same auction for a while and buy multiple items. They right. save on shipping, you save on shipping. Like right. eBay, my biggest loss is shipping because even on there, you know, they'll charge you for you have to whatever your fee is, it's out of the item total plus shipping. So I well, pay fourteen percent even on my shipping, which sucks. Well, what I what I do is I don't do their shipping labels. I um I print my own shipping labels on on uh, pirate ship. Gotcha. And gotcha. so that way eBay, like eBay, they just pay me what you know what what they pay me, and then I, you know, use the funds that you know to do the shipping, and then you know gotcha. everybody's happy. I'll upload the the tracking link and all that jazz. So. But yeah, it's like, oh man, here's a game. How do you? How do we play? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is not a how-to thing. <laughs> um, I will. I will say. So we've got. We've got these. Um, so both players. I know I'm all over the place, but that's the. If if anyone's. 
been that's around my show a while. Yeah, that's that's just the nature of my show. I'm I'm here, there, and everywhere. I mean, it's it's a variety. I, I call it a variety stream. Um, but uh, the thing is, each player has two um, basic actions that both players have access to. So what that means is, these are I'm the only one that can buy cards off of these, right? Because these are my team. And then, but both me and my opponent can buy cards off of these. And these are actions. These are called uh, basic action dice. And so you can buy these uh, at whatever the cost is of the, you know. And there's there's so many different abilities, and it's all based on abilities. Each one of these cards do different things. There's also these things called global, um, uh, where's that? Global ability down here. It's a red text. It's kind of hard to see because my camera's crud, but. Um, <clears throat> essentially a global ability is is something that any player can pay at any time just to do it they don't need the die to make it happen they just need the energy type that it asks for like batman has a global um global ability that like you can pay one of anything and uh, and it says the first time you would play a basic action this turn uh, draw one die and add it to your prep area now, that's something about this game that's um, unique. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spend these spend these points. I'm going to spend these two on a question die. And then I'm going to spend these two on a ping die. So so I put I put my spent ones up here. I forget how that's supposed to go. I think, I think I'm supposed to do it this way. I think I'm supposed to put the, the ones that I spend down here. Because it, it matters having to do with um, there's there's like timing issues in this game. Hmm. There, they can be anyway. But um, but anyway, so and then that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I could attack here, um, and if the opponent uh, blocks, then it probably is going to kill my character. So it goes over here to the knockout pile, which eventually goes into my prep area. Now, what this means is when I go to reach into my bag for my four, I get four plus whatever's in my prep area. So that's why Batman's ability here says, um, whenever I play a basic action, which is which would be rolling, like rolling this die and it landing on that, this little symbol here versus that, which is a generic resource. I know this is probably like, <laughs> you're like, oh, what? <laughs> <clears throat> It's mostly making sense so far. I mean, it's kind of, kind of some of the aspects of other popular card games. Yeah. So today. these are these are just generic resources um, on the on these sides, and then the other. So you have you have three that have those, and then you have three that have the um, the little uh, explosion with the expl uh, exclamation point, and then the, there's one has a double asterisk, and then one has a single asterisk. Um, and those those can do different things so like on this card on ping if it has either a single asterisk or or both asterisk it it's called boomerang so what can happen is um i can roll it and if it if it actually at, it, during the boomerang roll if it rolls on if if, I, if it lands on any of these besides the two i can actually put it right back into my prep area instead of putting into my use pile the reason that's important is like right now, I'm about to draw my four, but I can't. So I have to take everything that's unused and put it in my bag. And then I'll <clears throat> shuffle it up and then I grab four, right? Which, <laughs> womp womp, I didn't get any heroes. Oh well. So I take these four and then I add these two for my prep area, right? And then, and then I roll all six. So basically, as long as you can keep kind of pumping dice into your prep area with card abilities or whatnot, you'll ha you'll be able to you know chuck fistfuls of dice. So in this case, we actually have quite a bit of energy. I've got <clears throat> was this a total of six to spend? I could I could actually reroll this just to I mean that's if I had anything that would cost seven, but I've got two two characters here that cost six each. I'm probably gonna get rid of Parallax. Um, his ability is really hard to get off, but it's kind of powerful if if it does. Um, basically, the way he works is uh, while he's active, meaning he's uh, I fielded him. Um, if I roll at least three masks, 
mask symbols on um, on the, the like the dice, excluding the um, the wild. Um, then he lets me draw, and then uh, I can draw and roll two dice at the end of the roll reroll step. <clears throat> so he actually lets me bring on even more dice from my bag. So it's a pretty powerful ability, <clears throat> but hard, really hard to get off because getting three masks all at once can yeah. be difficult unless you have a bunch of masked heroes, which is why this thing is <clears throat> all masks. <clears throat> so um, I am going to reroll this just to, well, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone, and I'm gonna buy. I'll go ahead and buy Parallax. Why not? I usually go for Larflees first because <clears throat> his ability is kind of cool. Uh, basically, uh, and this is Larflees. When he attacks, I can swap one of my sidekick dice in the field zone with a character that's in the used pile. So in this case, if let's say I had Larflees in play and he and he's attacking. I can take this guy and I can convert him into <laughs> a parallax. <laughs> mm. Like that. How cool is that? Very thematic because with the rings, you know, uh, all of the the rings in the in the, um, in the um, the War of Light, you know, the different uh, color rings, they they make constructs, right? So using cosmic energy, they can make things. Yeah. And so Larflees is able to make this guy turn into a big you know, parallax character. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Um, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, have you heard of ISOM? The, or, yeah, last, okay, last time I think we talked about Ripa, uh, Eric July last year. I think it was, yeah, it was like last fall. I think I brought it up to you when we were at the, at the, the toy convention thing. Yeah, yeah, you did mention so, so this is ISOM number one. This is uh, the cover B, I think. I bought this one because I really liked it. I didn't, I didn't really like their cover A choice that they had last year. But, um, well, so he launched yesterday ISOM number two, and he's already. So this, this campaign, this, this original campaign. Hey, Timmy, Timmy Mello is in the house. Oh man, I got, I got catching up to do here. Let me, uh, let me see what I can do. Yeah, I know. I know it kind of looks uh, cray cray, but I don't know. I guess I do have rules, I suppose. And Timmy's this, <laughs> this is his first. This is his first. Uh, his first time in here, so maybe I'll, I'll make him wait till next time before he can become a, a moderator. <laughs> um, but uh, what's up, Timmy? Yeah, he's he's one of my buddies on uh, on the Twitter machine. Real cool dude. He um, a lot of times we'll talk in in Twitter Spaces, <clears throat> talk uh, comics and lore and stuff. But anyway, so um, so I saw him number one. Um, the original campaign made three point seven million dollars. Oh wow! <laughs> in uh, seventy five days, right? Wow. And, this one the it's only been a day right and and he's almost uh with isom number two he's almost at um a million wow in, in a single day and so i'm telling you man ripiverse is uh they're they're at this point you know they they've got to be putting the comics industry on notice i mean he he was talking smack back then but he's proven it since you know from from then until now Plus, he's got some really cool stuff on the on the new um, campaign. Um, a lot of people are joining in on that, which unfortunately, I have to. I kind of. I, I really got to watch what I'm buying <laughs> lately. Right. You know, I want to join in and get you know get ISOM. I'll, I'm just gonna have to catch up because um, Chrome Dog is is pretty much taking most of my focus. Uh, with a few exceptions here and there i'm I'm back in some projects um and again they're pretty much catching up like uh, i backed one called the uh, battle brick road i don't know if you've heard of it yet mm. probably not <laughs> yeah, that's what I have. so 
so battle battle brick road is uh it it's basically a um a militaristic way of telling the um wizard of oz story but it's like super awesome and fun like it's it's really cool um and so there's gonna you know there's like a tin man and a um and a scarecrow right and the lion and you know of course dorothy um timmy Mello says alpha core will exceed ison number two you think i mean what because of chuck dixon I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I want to read a, a, a police comic, you know, a police force comic book. But then again, I am into Green Lantern, and technically he's an intergalactic policeman. So, um, maybe. So Alpha Core is another one of the properties. Matter of fact, here, let me show you. This is uh, in reverse. Let's see. There, there they are. That's Alpha Core. These three. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think Yaira's going to do, like, Yaira's, because at this point, like, she's pretty damn cool. Um, I think she's the Thor of, um, she's going to be like the Thor of his universe. <clears throat> but um, I also have a feeling <clears throat> with Isom, um, I think he's going to wind up being like Superman originally was, where <clears throat> he doesn't fly, he just leaps really far, maybe. They haven't really explored his um, uh, his power set yet, and that's been a lot of disappointment by a bunch of folks. Timmy Mello says, "I think so." Chuck's a big name. Yeah, I mean Chuck Dixon is a big name. I'm not gonna lie. <clears throat> I enjoy his writing. <laughs> um, matter of fact, I'm still collecting Shadow Tiger comics, <clears throat> which is that's him and uh, Graham Nolan working together for a uh, an Indian uh, comic book company. Um, years ago, and so I'm kind of collecting those. Dixon. Are we talking about the guy that did the Batman Spawn crossover back yeah. in the day? Yeah. Yeah. Not just that. Like he's he's done like a lot of Batman. A bunch of DC stuff. Yeah. Well, DC. Um, yeah, I don't. Maybe he hasn't done any Marvel. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um. But he did the um, Batman Punisher. I, th I think, yeah, I think he did the Batman Punisher crossover. If I'm not mistaken. I'll have to pull it out. I've, I've got it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Timmy says that's him. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, with, with ISOM, like this, people are hungry for good stuff, right? Yeah. They, they, want, they want good quality um entertainment and you know in in the form of of a, of a i mean i hate to say it in a form of disposable media like a comic book i mean it, it's you know we we lose sight that the original you know medium itself was was meant you know it's meant to be read and then just like trashed i mean that was just like you know any any good quality magazine back in the day you know you read the thing and then you there you go <laughs> you know Pop it up and use it for your kids arts and crafts like I, I yeah ex exactly yeah um oh yeah he's uh yeah timmy timmy says uh he created bane with graham nolan yeah you're right um and by the way oh, okay. speak of the devil here's a chuck dixon bane book <laughs> hmm. um here he's with uh Rick Burchett. I just happen to have it over here because it's it's on it's on the chopping block. I'm looking to get rid of it. Um, man, this kills me every time I see it. Batman yeah. created by Bob Kane. It's like no, he wasn't. <laughs> Freaking Bill Finger is very much like <clears throat> very much everything that we know of the Dark Knight was certainly a a, a Bill Finger um, original uh, idea. So. Nope. Whatever. Bob Kane. But it's yeah. kind of... It's kind of... It gets in one of those weird spaces. Kind of like when you start talking about like... Uh, like early Marvel and stuff too. Gets like that. But it's... When you have people working on the same stuff. Like sure. Bob Kane drew him. But Bill Finger wrote him. So who... Who are you giving the credit to? 
It's it's strange well, that they only put one name in the book is what what gets my attention. Yeah, well, and I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and that's like for me, that's something that that I'm real keen on. Whenever I create these characters um, in you know in my own universe, I'm I'm very keen to make sure that my artists understand that you know um you know and, and of course luke is so gracious like i give him my vision and then he just and i let him go ham with it and then we kind of like figure out where we're going you know as far as like what the look of we'll say chrome dog for example he's he's designed other characters for me but we'll say chrome dog um i told him what i wanted and then he's like well you know i've been kind of thinking you know what else you know this or that and then and then he we just kind of have a session where we're you know he's drawing it and i'm looking at him like yeah that looks really cool and this and that and then you know the finished product becomes you know it kind of it's it's mine even though it's him drawing it right and and helping me hash out the you know the complete like what chrome dog become you know becomes it's still my character yeah um and as I, the writer know, so right and I, and I pay, you know, I pay him for that, right? I pay him yeah. to just draw the character for me, create the 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 the, um, the 360 turnaround, so that I can take that going forward, so that other artists can use that to draw my character. But right. it's very, you know, very important whenever I write up my my contracts. It's like, okay, look, unless you have a stake in the actual story, you know, creating the story. Um, and I'm not even talking about like editing credits, right? I'm just talking about, you know, the actual story itself and the actual like origin of a character or whatever. It's like, this is my character. Yeah. Um, I mean, like you working with Luke, though, is a little bit, it's a little bit different because it's like you came to him with this idea. Right. And said, and said, you know, I'm hiring you to do this. Exactly. I'm not exactly sure how it, you know, so that's so long ago. I'm not really sure how some of that stuff played out between you know bob kane and bill finger or jerry siegel and joe schuster or jack kirby you know it's like all that it happens with every one of them true but I mean, that's yeah. true i mean and and to be fair like i think jerry conway even though he created the punisher it wasn't until we got um you know and most people would not argue this fact but it wasn't until we got mike Barron's take that you know, we actually had a like a real version of the Punisher, like a real, like who Frank Castle was going to be, right? Because you know, Jerry Conway was was creating him for you know to, to have this this um, you know like a foil to Spider Man in this one comic book. You also start getting into characters that are so old that certain like they've been rendered by enough creators, yep, that these different visions of them have highly contributed to just the way the character has evolved over time like conan the barbarian is, is a big one that's done that like you can credit robert e howard in the 30s sure but if sprague de camp and lynn carter hadn't decided hey let's rewrite these add some stories and edit them in chronological order and slap them together for an audience in the 70s we probably wouldn't have gotten the movie in the 80s now for roy thomas we wouldn't have got the comic series so it's like there's so many people blended in here. It's like modern Conan isn't Howard's character anymore. Right. But, but yeah, it's comic space is a strange thing. And I, I see more often than not artists do get priority over the writers. That's usually how it goes, at least in the past. That's how it's been. Well, and I think, I think to, to a large extent, they, <laughs> And this is probably going to hack off a lot of my writer friends. <laughs> to a large extent, they should because they're doing all of the heavy lifting. I mean, you know, and this is coming at it from 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 the you know from knowing my own craft and in, in writing these stories and developing these characters. In you know, in the what makes them what they are, right? Or may, I'm sorry, what makes them who they are, right? Where the artist pretty much makes them what they are. Because yeah. without the artist, I'm over here writing screenplays. <laughs> you know, right. I mean, closet. You know, we're we're talking like closet dramas. I'm writing. I'm writing things that people can 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 see in their imagination only. 
And so then we get back into short story, novella, and no novel territory. And so at that point, yeah, okay, as an author, sure, I have full, you know, complete control over everything in my universe and da 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 da. But with an, but, you know, it's, because it's a visual medium, there has to be a certain amount of credit given to artists as far as like giving vision. But at the same time, creation credit, it's or 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 ownership rights. I think is a separate. Uh, you know, story or a separate yeah. issue. Um, when you get into like you know movie adaptations and stuff, that you start having oh, a debate yeah. between yeah. the like, how often do you even hear a screenwriter's name? Like, let's be honest, almost never. It's always the director. Like every right. time, directors and actors get all the attention because they're on the screen. Exactly. Their their vision is what the final product is. Right, and so yeah. it's. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> yeah, no, I, as a writer myself, who's not really in any visual medium, uh, it bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you know, and that's and that's the thing, man. It's it's like, so if you listen to Rob Liefeld on his podcast, he he goes on and on about how he calls writers. Um, you know, a lot of these people that get create, you know, creative uh, credit or even pay, right? Uh, working for Marvel, they would they would uh, be given a creation, you know, creator credit, even though all they did was script, right? All they did was create dialogue for the character. They didn't really have a hand in, you know, the nuts and bolts of what makes, you know, say Bane who Bane is, right? Right. They were just someone who was around to be able to take the vision of the of the, the the writer, if you will, and you know, and the space and create text that would be able to you know to hand off to the letterer so that it wouldn't cover yeah. up too much of the artwork. And I mean, you know, and in yet the they're given space, a creative, you know, created, uh, you know, creator you, credit. You have this like background material, like when they were making Venom, like it's always been a big thing. Who created Venom? Uh, Todd McFarlane or the other guy that I don't remember, because um, <laughs> that's I'll, how great my I'll, memory is. I'll hit the, I'll hit the Google machine. Yeah, continue. hit the Google machine. His uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, a couple so people involved. So it says Todd Todd McFarlane, Mike Zek, and David Michelini. Which yeah. Man, I love David Michelini. He's he's so cool, and he's so down to earth. Shout out, shout out to you, David. Man, he's 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 so down to earth. Um, I uh, I was inspired by uh, by some of his work, especially those future comics that I think I got from you, <laughs> or I got one I got one future comic from you, and um, and as I I've been collecting them, I've been reading them. I reached out to I found him on Facebook and I reached out to him. And he's so down to earth, man. Um, and he, he gave me like words of encouragement as a writer. So I, I just big shout out. Love That's it. Really cool. But yeah, but yeah. So getting back to, so yeah, Mike Zek maybe was, I mean, either one Michelini or Mike Zek, you think? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure everybody had their play in it. And then there's also been debate about another guy that actually sent in the suit design or something a long time ago and was so, featured in the back or something. I don't know. So but, we got, so we've got the alien costume. This is again according to I got to give you know credit where it's due. According yeah. to Wikipedia, we've got the alien costume. First appearance was in May of 1984, uh, probably during the Secret Wars, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I was around then. I, well, <laughs> I was around later. I got it in a back issue, um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So his cameo appearance. So as Venom. So. The alien costume originally, and then as Venom was in 1988, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 299. So the alien costume were created. Okay, here's the thing. So the alien costume credit credit is given to Randy Schuler, Roger Stern, Tom DeFalco, Mike Zek, Ron Friends. Okay. <laughs> Yo, are you gonna tell me that five people came together to create this one guy, right? Right. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of kind. I guess Venom has a kind of a long history because of the alien costume, and then also if you you're familiar with Todd McFarlane, you know that Venom and Spawn have a lot in common, <laughs> anyway, and especially in terms of design. That's true. 
And yeah, uh, I, didn't, I hadn't even thought of that. And spawn is like a cross between. Um, funny thing about it is, yeah, uh, you can actually like Todd McFarlane has his original drawings of Spawn when he was like fourteen as a character idea. So that kind of blended in. It, it's complicated. Yeah. And then you have all these people sitting down and coming up with like the backstory for this character, and none of that really appears in the comic because they make this guy, but there's 10, 20 issues. We're talking about like months and months of them before they actually slowly reveal all this stuff that they've been thinking about all this time. Right. So it's this background info who wrote it? That's the question. It's was it all of them together? Was it was there a scrap piece of paper sitting in Mike Zek's office with all of Venom's background information on it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's there's yeah. a there's a gray area there, but true. Like I'm sure now, even now you have you know all these notes for what you want to do with Chrome Dog that the the actual notes will never see the light of day as far as like publication. Because they get realized in a different form than the, the way the notes are. Yeah, I mean you're you know you're not you're not wrong. Um, I originally like, well, <laughs> I don't want to give too too many spoilers, <laughs> but the original idea, the original concept of <clears throat> Chrome Dog was supposed to be in a uh, kind of a futuristic space age type of world. But um, I, uh, I felt like that was it was kind of done to death um, and had you know has been um, in, in a way. But I also thought, well, if he lives in that kind of a world, what makes him super? like what makes him exceptional? Um, and so I thought, okay, well I w I've been wanting a grounded you know story like um, uh, Daredevil or um, iron fist <clears throat> and so i'm like you know what i want to you know i want to set this in a place that's like you know like the 90s you know where, where there's still tele telephone booths and l landlines are everywhere <clears throat> you know you know that c cellular service is a a very a, a it's very expensive and it's quite the luxury and is only reserved for certain people whether they're <clears throat> the the hyper rich or the or authority figures Everybody else has to use a landline telephone. And so, you know, for Chrome Dog, he can he can operate in that space and be able to hack um, using, you know, things wirelessly. Why? Because his suit allows him, or his body, I should say, allows him to <clears throat> remotely jack in, uh, if you will. <coughs> but anyway, well, wow. So we've gone, we've been going for about an hour and a half tonight i definitely want to have some some time for tomorrow i don't want to bore too many people too much with with the uh the constant staring of my game state not doing anything i've reset everything <laughs> of course the it, to those of you who actually play dice masters yes this is illegal um what what i mean <laughs> you know what i mean is i'm supposed to only have 20 dice and i remember because i've got let's see i've got uh, six nine uh, my math is like what I've had a heck of a day um, so I've got nine over here and then I've got that's uh, five plus another eight so yeah that's way more than 20 or somewhat more than 20 um, like what 20 I'm gonna have to add it up for 22 22 I've got you got me for two dice so yeah there there you happy all right <laughs> get rid of one Batman and one Robin there we go um, but yeah, well, man, this has been a, a great conversation. I love that you you have all this knowledge of um, of all the all the old comic book stuff, especially with um, with Roy Thomas. I know you're a big fan of his, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love my Conan work. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. A, that's my main collection there, but. <clears throat> Would you yeah, say he's, um, would you say he's your favorite uh, comic book hero? That's that's kind of tough because he wasn't my first. So you know, there's always a little bit of leeway towards like whatever you gravitated to the first time. Um, right. 
and for that you know like I, I got out of comics when I was I you know you get like 10 and you think comics are for little kids so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get back into them until I was a teenager and then I, I was maybe 15 or 16 and spawn issue ones right there at a yard sale and I'm like I'll get into this sure um so that was like my first entry back into the back into collecting huh. and and spawn was for the longest time the only thing i collected for probably for about four years and besides some random image issues i was picking up here and there wildcats and that kind of stuff just because the i thought the imprint was neat but but then uh yeah i i realized that you know conan i had been reading conan since i was younger probably 12 or so and and i never i stayed away from the comics i guess because in my head it was like only howard can make conan <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i only yeah. wanted to read the original original works until i finally decided to to just sit down and read some of it and i was this is actually good like i feel like they did a fairly good job at adapting the character adapting the character into their universe and i was really interested also in sort of seeing how he evolved and expanded like they added some things here and there and i saw how there was even like marvel team up and like spider-man is fighting some version of zaf in the future one of the gods from the lore uh, that stuff was interesting to me so yeah so yeah it's it's somewhere between conan and spawn is probably my my main collection. So I guess, yeah, yeah, you're you're definitely more of a collector than than I am. <clears throat> I um I was a collector, I, I you know years ago, but um you know I had a purge because <laughs> you know I I um it, and it wasn't to me it, you know i was i wanted to share with my kids but they didn't have any any desire right. um and then i just I, and I saw that i could extract some value from from this stuff so i just got rid of it i got to the point where the space and the money that i could get from them was more valuable yeah. to me than just having you know having this stuff from my childhood you know i think part of the collecting is just getting to that point right it's a lot of fun to collect it all and then you get to the point where you have most of it and you're like okay it's time to let it go start over yeah and start with a different series or or whatever but it, like you're saying i have the like talking about some of the older books and sort of different eras like you're you have the whole indie space thing and i don't know much about any of that and newer releases and stuff i'm kind of out of the loop right on that so well, and th that's that's the thing. So we've got you know Arrow Comics, which is the okay. the company that I'm I'm with, um, you know, and of course Chrome Dog is going to be an Arrow Comics book. But there's you know we've got Aaron Lepresti. Have you have you ever heard of him? No. <laughs> I guess someone's talking to you <laughs> yes sorry about that i got somebody in the background chatting to me hang on just a second yeah sure no problem um so anyway thanks thanks to whoever whoever's still hanging with us in chat um <laughs> appreciate it um i know we've been going at it for for a while here um <laughs> yeah we've been going for a minute i'm back in for just a second i'm gonna have to yeah, yeah, yeah. Out here That's soon, fine. So, um, so yeah, I guess we'll just we'll kind of leave it at that, and maybe tomorrow night, um, you know, if all well, you know, if all's going well, um, Chaos Chris will be able to to be in here, and and he and I can play some Dice Masters, and you can you're more than welcome to come and hang out, and you know we can talk and everything else while we're playing if you want. So I just realized my mic was probably on there for a second. I mean, it it probably was, but I don't think we were really listening. <laughs> I was oh, trying. Was to... I, uh, could you hear me in the ba vaguely? I don't know. Like, no, not sure. I mean, maybe I did. I don't, but I don't know what you said. I, I okay. was hearing mumbling. I don't. Okay. 
<laughs> mumbling's probably yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, Texas, be, uh, thank you. Good listening to you. Well, well, we appreciate you being with us tonight, man. Um, Tex. But um, but yeah. So everybody, just uh, have yourself a good a good evening, and um, and until next time. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to say it this way. I'm going to say, um, I've been, th this has been, uh, Randy of Radic, is it Radical Collectibles? That is me. <laughs> yeah. And, and I am Justin K. Sweet, uh, AKA Agent Zero. Uh, and, um, and until next time, enjoy our wild America. <laughs>